talk about the Premier. Premier series, the 80, 170, the 350, they all come in dual fuel now. So it, it, you don't have to have a conversion kit for that purpose. It's one unit with a bolt job. LP gas and natural gas, just a, a switch of the lever. Uh, I'm going to start with the component first, but we're going to start with the gas valve. The Premier Series have a single stage gas valve, a Honeywell gas valve. It's a 24 volt system, 24 volt gas valve, with half a pressure, half a pound of pressure in the Okay, and then uh, you can check your uh, inlet pressure here, just uh, 315 gallons per with the pressure bar. Your manifold pressure is tapped in here. So you can easily check your pressure here if you have any questions regarding your pressure coming in. Uh, remember there's an on off knob. Sometimes it's kind of it's funny, but we get followed and it's in my valve not opening, I got 24. Check the valve in the off position. So just double check that with those guys. Sometimes they go in and they count. And all of a sudden now your valve is not opening, so. <coughs> the 350 have two stage gas valves. Two stages uh, have two variable outputs, 350 and uh, what is it? Uh, 170. 170, 170,000 ETU. So the, that one is operated by a, a two stage thermostat. That two stage thermostat will control a high and low output of the gas valve. That one has a dual cylinder. But now I forgot to mention that too, this one has dual cylinder. So even though you're hearing a click, that might be just one of the solenoids that's opening, and the other one might still be closed. So, you know, the best thing to do is check for voltage, check for pressure. You can eliminate that possibility of the valve being so open. The two stage have actually three solenoids, one on high and two <coughs> on low. So that one's a little bit more of a uh, uh, valve that you really have to do a double check to make sure that all valves, are open, all the solenoids are open. Let me just so I, I want to explain further that two stage gas valve in the 350 because I know it's confused on two stage regulators. When we're talking gas valve, the reason we do that on the 350, you know, when there's a demand for heat, it's basically just built into the system to, to at two levels raise the increments of that heat demand. So you know, if all of a sudden we need heat, rather than just go boom, here's 350,000 BTUs worth of combustion, we step it up and kind of go, okay, let's do it 170. Warm it up a little bit, let's jump up to 350, warm it up, and then run at 350 as it's needed. And as it needs to cool down, it'll slow down to 170 and then cycle off. So it's just more, it's to create greater efficiencies in fuel consumption in the product. Correct. You don't get that sudden <coughs> spike and change in temperature. Especially when you're working in a construction area, you know, all of a sudden the heater shuts off, it cools down to a certain temperature, then it'll come back on. Now you get the fluctuation. This way you get a little bit more evenly cool yes. temperature in the room. Especially when you're trying to dry, dry wall and stuff like that. Uh, the valve location is pretty much right next to the, the side of the case. Now, we're talking about the case too. The outlet is usually the front. So, when we said that's the front, this is the front, and these are the sides. Okay? So, you know, some people are thinking, hey, it's a door valve, that's the front. Technically, that is true, but we consider that the side. So, yeah, the door valve is located right here. And both valves are operating on 24 volts. Now the dual fuel system have a, a gas valve selector. That's just a, a quick lever going from LP to NASA. It's just a, a standard shot valve that we kind of bore a hole through it to mask the LP gas setting. So you know when you're in natural gas, it's full open, and then that reduces down to the LP pressure that we require to run the heater. And it's a simple just flipping the left. Again, uh, it's one unit does both, no conversion kit needed, less inventory for you guys to have this <coughs> well. And it's, it's the same system for both, it's just a different uh, size and, and uh, handle. Uh, one side, a, a, just a little tiny handle right here. So, you know, we have a label right on the, the base for the units. Parallel, lack of gas, perpendicular, LP gas. From there, we're going to travel with the gas up to the burner, and from the burner to a, a orifice, a brass orifice. The burner casting is where all the gas and air, primary air mixture is going to happen for combustion. 
and the orbit is going to what's going to allow so much gas into the canopy for that proper combustion. That's going to, and we're going to need that proper combustion to reduce some of the CO level that's going to be coming out of that direct fire. The air is coming in direct contact with that uh, uh, contaminant you know, heat. So we want to make sure that gets as clean as we can get it. And then obviously you're going to have some secondary air to help dilute some of that combustion and help reduce some of that carbon monoxide as well. You know, is there a possibility of moving the table? I was just, just, just I'll think theory. about that, but then it will be right on the TV. Yeah, well, he's going to yeah, okay. oh. yeah. You can't see the inside of the uh, heater and you can't see the screen. Yeah. Uh, 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 I'm trying not to get further away from you guys, but is that yeah, how far I Yeah. If, if you guys can see it, let me know, okay? And then I'll, I can directly show you guys. Yep, I can bring this guy easily. Uh, right here. We're talking on the 80s, okay. I'm going to say right here. The 170 and the 350 is a similar casting burner. Uh, the same one that's on this plate. Uh, the grab orifice is obviously uh, just a little orifice kit there. And then obviously, if you get these standard heaters that doesn't have natural fuel, we do have a conversion kit for all the models, from LP to natural or vice versa. And inside there, you'll get a new, a new spring from one gas to the other, a new orifice, a set of instructions, and some pipe ropes. So that will come with the conversion kit if you have a standard 170 AE kit. A propane can be converted to a natural gas unit, a natural gas unit can be converted to a propane, but neither can be converted to dual fuel. And the fuel cannot be converted, so the dual fuel is on and on. There's a lot more involvement in converting that. You change the combustion chamber and all the other components. So. And then from there, we're going to travel off to the igniter, the source of ignition where the gas is going to, in a primary area, we're all going to get generated by a spark from the igniter and going to cause ignition. And I uh, just talked about that yesterday, Red, regarding the... Uh, looks similar to the Tradesman 400. I just mount it on the bracket and just it right over the port of the cap. And that will just cause a spark from 120 volt uh, igniter ignition cable that's generated from the control board. That will just cause a spark, gas, and primary air mix in right over it, and then the ignition. So, um, if you don't have ignition, I'll be referring to something for a proper gapping. Uh, I would say it's just going to spark against that to the ground rod. So, if you don't get any uh, need no gas or no ignition, check the igniter and check the ignition cable. This is still a couple of ways. Okay. Yes, that, those are the direct steps. So it does two jobs, flame sense. First it does ignition, after that it does a flame sense. So that's a direct sense ignition, and ignited. Safety. Now what, what sends the 120 volt? The control board. Very similar to the, the Tradesman 400, except it's a fully enclosed, it's a UCP board. It's uh, operated off a of 24 volt. It does take 120, but that 120 really don't do much until we get the 24 volt to the turn it on. That, that 120 volt is just coming in to feed the motor for the motor power. Up. <coughs> you need 24 volt for this guy to function first. So then there's a transformer on that board that drops the 120 down to 24? No, there isn't a transformer on the board. There's a secondary transformer that's on, on the heater. Alright, so that transformer will reduce the uh, 120 down to 24 to operate the board. It will feed 120 into here as well. And then when the board is powered, when the thermal is up for heat, the 24 comes on. It'll send the 120 volt back out of the inducer to the motor. And that's when it starts doing all its pre purging, uh, pre purging technical and all the rest of the uh, and then uh, we're going to go through these terminals too as well. 